Ashley, it's been such an incredible pleasure to engage with you in, in the course of these challenges and also to engage with your eloquence in, in, in dealing with these tools of perspective and perception and, and all the things that we're dealing with. You, you have really synthesized it uh, in your playing as well as your, your eloquent expression. And I, I, I applaud, applaud your eloquence as, as highly as I can uh, praise your playing because your, your playing has, has just transformed. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think, I think your, your perspective, your point of view has, has changed radically, has it? Definitely. Um, just, yeah, as, as you say, uh, we go to the atomic level, like the molecular level, going from note to note um, has really brought me closer to the instrument and to the music. Yeah, just the connection that this has given me to the music has like inspired me and made me more enthusiastic. Um, not just with this, but like with the other music that I'll, I'll be um, connecting with in the future as well. It sounds, I mean, it, it would seem by our description of it that it would be an onerous task, that it would be really uh, so obsessive as to be intimidating. But I, I, I gather that you have found it to be actually the opposite, that in the search for moment to moment decision making, we actually have a frame of reference to make those decisions, no? So just being able to go back to the elemental level of um, just thinking note to note has been really reassuring and most right. motivating thing that I would come across when I was practicing before was that I would feel like I would reach a dead end, like just with my approach to the music or yeah, just like I ran out of ideas on what to do next. And just this, this way, I feel like there's an infinite like range of possibilities that I could, I could go with. So, it's taught me like how to see the different possibilities and not take shortcuts to you know the end destination because there there is no there's no like right answer i guess there's just this magic of exploring the different ways and just being in the moment that's kind of what i've definitely learned from this approach i think it's it's really a matter of the degree of responsibility one is willing to take on. And some of it, some of the best intentions come from our pianistic training. I, I know I was, I was listening to a friend play uh, one, of the, one of the fugues and, and one of the lines was a descending line of quarter notes. You know, it was the top voice. And, and I just, I, I thought he's playing it in a very Chopin-esque way. And, and, and our instinct is to make a long line out of something like that. Whereas I was seeing everything in, in terms of, is this connected to what came before? Is this distinct or is this a new thing? Is this completely separate? That, that, that binaural, uh, that, that, you know, that two atom uh, molecule of connection or distinction, louder or softer. And uh, and then the the you know, the local contrast between between the voices. I have been so gratified, as I was saying uh, before, we got sidetracked into my <laughs> into my method. But and thank you for your appreciative and as as always insightful and uh, synthesized, thoroughly inhabited uh, words. Um, I, I was I was applauding the the transformation that your playing has gone through and the degree to which we are aware of you making these decisions, these calibrations on a, on a moment to moment base, basis, on the basis of your very deep listening and consideration. It would be one thing if we said, oh yes, we'll, we'll come up with this plan, we get loud here, we'll, we'll do this short, do this loud. It sounds very fussy and, and, and not terribly interesting, but when, when, when we are aware of it, when we when we hear you engage with this material, there is nothing. There's nothing unconsidered. There's nothing automatic. Everything is considered, and everything is is purposeful. 
and and we we just love to hear that and and so within that it will always be different based on how you're feeling that day or what what our concentration is on that day whether we're thinking more about contour or whether we're thinking more about uh, the, the the way we make the, the chords transparent or, or this or that or the other thing we, we can't keep track of everything and so it's always a matter of uh, the chemical balance of our concentration and so when I was when I was uh, speaking uh, to my friend today uh, we were talking about the, the, the Chopin-esque uh, way of, of rhythm in Bach which is to say uh, when I when I think of, of Chopin, I, I, the first thing I think of is that there are no downbeats. That every every downbeat is a, str a springboard. You know, you know, that that is that is not an end. That is that is shot out of a cannon. That is really a, a beginning in no uncertain terms. When I played with a uh, a student orchestra at a university, St. John's in Minnesota, a few years back, I said. I just want you to make a note that the the only real downbeat is in bar two hundred and forty eight, and they looked and looked, and of course that was the last the last downbeat of the first movement. And so yes, I was trying to instill in them this idea of the downbeat as springboard. And I was speaking with my friend Paul today about about the C minor partita, and we were trying to figure out how to get that feeling of an upward an upward uh, thrust into the air you know how how we how we make that 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 lightness not not a, a lightness but a real launching and and the way the way that I, you first played this for me there was a wonderful sense of excitement because of the of the very the very excited release i mean it was right And that's wonderful, and I love that. And then when when we became anecdotally engaged, when when I said, well, it might be a it might be a church orchestra in which you know maybe the cellist is is getting a little old and he doesn't cut off as quickly as some of the others, and it's a big church and things ring, and so we just got into the idea. And I was speaking with my friend Paul, who 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 said, yeah, it, it's not really a chord that you play; it's just this sound, and you know, I mean, and that's that's a nice concept. But I started thinking about how we can actually um, really make this make this work, and I, I came up with an idea for a sort of an exercise that I want I want you to to try, so we can hear you do this. So I'm 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 pretty much I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold the the top two voices full length, but I'm going to play this chord and I'm going to think in sixteenth notes. I'm going to hold the entire chord for two sixteenths, and then I'm going to release the chord one sixteenth note, one voice at a time. So you go three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's that's one way of doing it. And as 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 I was as I was sitting. Uh, setting up for our for our call i i thought well that's that's one way of doing it um what if we what if we uh, evaporated down towards the bass that's kind of nice i mean it gives us it gives a transparency to the to the upper voice i i think it i think having that much bass you know in our face is is probably beating a dead horse so I came up with the really bizarre solution, which is to evaporate the outer voices inward. So like this. Oh no, I, sh I don't want to. You know, I think I think I think when our third or third or fourth finger should be the last voice sounding. Watch this. Okay. in an exaggerated sort of way. But do you see how that it's it's I feel it's 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 making a palpable it's like they're 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 each is a they're each a balloon that we are releasing into the air. And the last one we hear is 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 actually just the melody which which is still we're holding in our hand. 
And I'm, I'm still doing a very quick release of the melodic voices. I'm, I'm not overholding them into the 16th rest. And so there is, there is a, a, a pride to it, I think. But I, I like the malleability now of, of our selective evaporation of, of, the, of the chord. And, and we may, as, as I, I have often thought, want to save full length all four voices for this wonderful, uh, this wonderful dominant with pedal. And this might be full length. Yeah. Right. Finally, yes. <laughs> Finally, all all six voices, and maybe even this one. Yeah, I I think there there's still a continuum. I, th I I I would opt for this being the the uh, the strongest, and then it should be a matter of evaporating so that we start from here. I mean, we're we're eventually going into into this subdominant, which is a, a little bit more yielding. Than, than than the than the tonic, and and I think the more we can make the differences of these very grand sonorities, what my friend Paul was talking about as as just this C minor sound, and and the 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 more we can actually engage with this as as I as I know you do, as always voices, always always voices, and and make a purposeful. Uh, idea that we can create the right texture out of a variety of lengths, different voices holding through. Um, but would you would you try just this? Uh, let, let's just do it with the left hand for for the for the for the, for the first time through. So I just want you to play that first chord and for two sixteenths, and then take each finger off one by one. As a roll, or no, no, we're, we're we're going to we're going to attack it solidly, and we're going to release it as a roll. Yes, that's exactly right. And how about how about if we want to do the opposite? If we want to go and we want to leave the bass note as the as the last note sounding. I think that's really interesting. I think it's it's fascinating, and it's it sounds, it's. You can hear each note somehow more. Yes, yeah. yes. It will, and and because because the you know the, the Yamaha is w to create the fullest sound, and it's also there to have the most efficient use of the tampers. I mean the the cleanest, the cleanest release of, of all of them. And so now we're, we're actually, I mean, and this, we're doing this in slow motion, but I think it's important to hear and to feel, also to feel it physically, because this is, this is actually instigating a sort of a Chopin-esque feeling of leaving the ground, of this downbeat as, as something that is actually in process of going into flight. With that in mind, could you, could you play, play the opening? That's beautiful. That's, it's wonderful. It, it, it's got such, what do you think? What, did you like it? What does it sound like under your ear? I like the engagement it gives me with the end of each chord. Yeah. And I can hear like quite a difference, I think, between like just taking them all off together and um, taking them one at a time off like that. Yeah. And it, it's, it's another one of these parameters of 
seemingly infinite uh, variety, a possibility, a range of possibility. So thank you for thank you for playing with it. I, I actually want to ask uh, about this pa this passage here. Both of both you and I have a bad habit of making. Watch my hand. I, I'm actually make. I'm actually making sort of two two wrist motions, one for each note. Mm. And what you and I should both work on is making making this really an upstroke. And this how, how we do that is we do it with the wrist. So it's it starts from the key and we pick it out. And the downstroke is this. You know, it's up. It's not. <laughs> no, that's that's a burlesque of what you, you didn't do anything like that. But you were doing two separate and equal motions for for both of those notes. And I maintain, I, I th actually you know you know the the uh, notation for up bow and down bow. Or actually, in in just in in if you're parsing a sentence, that sort of that sort of letter U is is a sort of a, a weak stress. And the sort of downward slash is a strong stress, you know, stress and release. Uh, those are, and, and I think of these in terms of up bow and down bow, or or up stroke and down stroke. So I would I would mark um, these these repeat, and it's it's very hard to actually that get very specific about how to execute this feeling of oh yeah, it's very easy to say that we should do this up and, and then this one is down. But physically, we find that we're actually creating two two downs very elegantly. But but if we can actually train ourselves to to make just one wrist motion, one wrist motion to pick it out of the key and then drop it, just drop it. Can you try that. That's right. And you and you don't have to. And you don't have to play it. You can just you can just drop your your drop your arm, drop your drop your. Pick it up on the way up. That's it. Did you watch Sophia doing that? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah so, so, so with 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 this, we're we are at the key, and we pick it up, and then drop our hand. Can you try that? Yes, that's it. Mm, that's it. That's it. And you know what? You can see it too. And I, I know because you know we, we were like batters in base American baseball, because you know batters have all kinds of you know little ticks that they do when they're standing at bat, and they you know they'll they'll rub their hands or, and and we prepare everything at the piano. Sometimes we, we do it with an inadvertent wrist preparation, but we can actually use that wrist. The wrist is the wrist is after all how we move around the piano. Our, our fingers can only move so 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 far. The wrist gets us everywhere. The wrist determines how the arm engages uh, to 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 create the the, the weight to, to create the most beautiful sound. And here it is. It creates the sense of up bow and upstroke. It's in the wrist, because because I, I could I could I could see and 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 the way you, you were playing, I mean you were playing it very light, but it was it was it was not. It, it, you, we can't just do it with our fingers. I'm afraid. It really has to be from the wrist, and you can hear it and see it when you play it. Try it one more time. No, I, I saw you. I saw you play it. I saw you play. I saw your fingers play it. I want you to to pick it out of the keys. Just let your fingers play them on the way up. Yes, yes. Again, you can hold it a little bit longer. Yes, yes. We still hear it up. We still hear it up. You can play it as long as you like. As long as you. As long as that release is with the wrist. As Sophia says, the breathing wrist. Yes. You know, the, the idea is it doesn't have to always be a, a huge motion, but we are training a new habit. 
what we're mm -hmm. what we're trying to untrain is any extraneous motion and what we're trying to 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 train is just doing it with just lifting it out not playing it with our fingers just lifting it out of the key and then letting it drop again yes yes isn't isn't it, isn't that gratifying when we can actually play the note <laughs> but it's but it's what's wonderful and and what you've done so beautifully is that you have you are calibrating each of these so sounds and so you you were making the right sound and the level was perfect and the sense of line was fantastic from a dynamic standpoint but getting that supposedly ineffable sense of making an upstroke on the piano we now discover it's a matter of just using the wrist and not using the wrist beforehand just let letting that moment and as long as we as long as we train that instinct then it, it can happen very quickly but it happens absolutely at that elemental level and and luckily you know he he, he lets us uh, play this right hand by our by ourselves so this can take a lot of experimentation <laughs> and the left hand the left hand can meanwhile rehearse releasing of the chords how's that wow. so that'll be the way to practice this yeah um i want to go to the um to the andante a little bit because this was this was where we really felt so much of your engagement with the material and and the constant awareness of of where we wanted where you wanted the bass to be ambient and when you wanted it to participate when you wanted it to support this was all having to do with length but also having to do with with really feeling the sense of harmony in other words when we have this continuum of notes i can show you this continuum of notes you know can can really be tempting and you've 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 thwarted temptation by not giving into this continuum of sound we we have this wonderful sense of really reacting to these things instinctively on a basis of perspective and perception so for instance i i look at this opening and, and instead of going up to it i think of this as just an outline of a horn if i go up to it i think I, I, i've come to the conclusion that uh, and this this becomes much more uh, important when we get to the allegro as well as to the rondo but i've, I've come to realize that uh, our idea of contour dynamics i knew there was something wrong because i, I would go for a high note and rather than get loud to it I, I would want to float up to it you know and and and, and so i come to know that the the contour dynamics getting louder when we go up getting softer when we go down holds absolutely true and is something that we need to really really uh work at even now uh when the voices are in contrary motion um perhaps we we, we can we can we'll get there right now we have to really think of of all of these decision it's almost like not a melody it's just a it's a strumming of a guitar and and the the point is we have to take over this sound but but the other problem is it's a repeated figure and so we have to really really place place the parentheses around uh, around this this first d and c do you see what i've put there i've, I've put parentheses around them so the, the, the first time I actually engage is just here. I'm thinking of these completely parenthetically from this, from these as soft as I can play. And I'm not making a crescendo. I'm just, do you hear that? And the lower we go, especially when we have the, the bass note, the bass is going up. Because I would have a very hard time feeling confident 
getting this soft just in time to do I would think that would sound terrible and sound like I was just so shy and so nervous that I couldn't play any louder. But the fact that if, if we actually follow uh, the left hand, its contour, we see that it goes up, we should have a sense of, of the rising quality of that line. Sorry, yeah, I didn't get that bass note right. So I'm playing that 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 last note in the treble almost like nothing, but but since I'm rising with the with the bass in yes, baby girl, what, what can I do for you? What is it, sweetheart? Do you want some food? Oh, do you want the do you want the cushion on the bed? You want to go outside? I can let you outside. The problem, Iman, is that if I leave the door open, we hear all kinds of traffic noise. Can you go outside? And you can let you can let me know when you want back in. But we have to shut it for the noise. She's, she's, she's trying to understand why I would have a closed door when it's so beautiful outside. It's very warm still, and the sun is coming down. I have to have the curtains completely closed because otherwise I would just I'd be blinded. <laughs> but so if we really follow the contour when we are, when we are addressing, this definitely goes down and this is definitely going up. This is so beautiful what you do now. The whole the whole idea of of this letting go, this uh, of abandoning the, the the way that we, you know, this sort of this this projected and presented sound. Rather, we want using using it as that really intoning that falling and and sighing motive. Um, you know, Bach. We we come to recognize these these motives and these shapes. Uh, we, we see them in all of these other works, you know, the, the falling tetrachord yeah. always will fall with sound. Yeah. I always made... Do you hear how I, I do these last two? I, when I'm when I'm making a, a change of, of, of direction or just if I've if I've had I've had four four thirty seconds too many. <laughs> you hear that? Because because again, it's it's our Chopin esque instincts that make it move. right. But you're engaging on a moment to moment level. Sorry. Ah, and here you know I I, I keep forgetting because visually we see the, the notes getting faster and we start feeling more excited. And I have to pinch myself and remind myself of Vedrana's axiom, which is to say that all of the, the, the faster notes are the more expressive notes. And you know this, your playing is all about it. So all the... So... Let's hear you play some of this on Dante. I would love that.
Iman, Iman, this is, this is so beautiful, actually. I hate to stop you, but Iman had a suggestion, which is, which is, and and you and you do this so beautifully. This. Why would why would he why would he write that slur? I mean, it's you know, it's it, as as we always say. Oh, nice idea, Johan. We were sort of planning to. We were trying. We were going to connect those anyway. But I think I think the the use of the slur making making this a separate gesture means that we have to, you know, you, you take some space before it, and I think we can take some space after it as well. So it, it, it um, you know, it, can, it can really, it can suspend time. If, if, if we're trying to find a way to, to make that slur mean everything that it can mean because you do you do it so beautifully yeah this is amazing i mean that's 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 just doing exactly what it wants it's got space in front of it it has this absolute embrace of all the notes under it and also has that great baroque uh, bow feeling of having an impetus at the beginning of the sound and an actual palpable, palpable release is not, you know, that those days are done. And he's given us a slur to prove it. Yeah. And, and, and if he could only have heard what that sounds like on the piano, what, what an expressive and amazing sound that is. He could, he could mollify and modify by way of overholding. The, the the sound of the harpsichord and and the the plucking, if he overheld it, he could get rid of a little bit of that. But it's really only on the piano that we that we can really make that happen. And and you do it so so beautifully. But we have to. I think we need just a little bit more time. That I mean, there there are some of these places in in the in the preludes and fugues where I actually have uh, and as I would put here, I mean I know it's a it's a violent marking. But I would just, you know, I would just, well, there's that slur there. That's, 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 that's kind of what I have in mind. And it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like we're actually slowing down too much. It's just that, that we're, we're making sure that this is, this is an arrival. It happens to be not on the, on a downbeat. But it is no less important as though it, it would be visually. We would see it. Mm -hmm. And it gives us a nice way of of segueing so that we can get get faster as we wish. We could we can let the soprano hang a little bit. Let her sing her high G. And and this 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 begins. I think probably the softest, the softest we begin this um, sequence, probably the longer we're going to be able to to keep the idea of of this uh, of this idea. You know, first of all, so so this is. I mean, the general idea is this is is first the fifth. So, so we definitely want to be growing long term over the course of those two measures, and I think part of it is part of it is is looking at uh, where we are in terms of the har harmony. I think I think G minor in C minor has got to be pretty desolate. I mean, you know, what we what we what we, we would be expecting in in happier times would be. You know, I mean, that would be sort of the natural thing, wouldn't it? Um, it's really really pretty a distant. It's really a distant key when you think about it. So that, that really, they, they have each their sort of flavor to them. But I think the general idea is over the course of the two bars, we want to have... It'd be 
becomes more and more, I think rhythmically becomes more stolid and, and less moving, um, probably becomes more and more expressive as we, as we go. So we, as we start, and we just as a breath. Now we've got some words to it. Um, so we're getting a little bit more of the rhetoric going. I'm, I still don't think I'm, I'm making too much of a crescendo yet. No, I think you're... So, so I've, I've saved it for the last minute. And we could even do it as a surprise because I think I'm making a graded engagement in terms of the expressivity, going from a more um, a more moving or you know that kind of really as a gesture, and, and then a little bit more spoken, and then, and then actually a little bit of dark matter between the thirty seconds. And then, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's the exaggerated end of the spectrum. Could you take this from, from this passage? And, and take all the time you want to make that resolution. It can actually be a moment of silence. And we will, we will be drawn in to you. Yes. Well, I, 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 I still like the idea of building to it. Absolutely. I totally. It's just that I, I was just merely pointing out that we don't actually have to get louder in order to make it more exciting and add tension to it. As, as you just demonstrated, you know, it absolutely uh, it conveys a, a sequential incremental idea of of more and more engagement and more and more rhetorical fervor. So, so we're actually going to engage as you're doing absolutely beautifully and instinctively, you know, adding adding the dark matter between the 30 second notes. Now we can actually give in to our impulse to to make that crescendo as well, by all means. <laughs> Try, try again and actually try, try again from where we were before and actually let go like like my my horrible big black mark on the score <laughs> fantastic how does it feel does it feel like fun to do definitely yeah <laughs> everything is, it feels fun to do yeah oh good <laughs> and and as and as you pointed out you know it, it, it can be a, again a chemical balance that will be different on different days we can become and i become completely obsessed with one characteristic uh, one facet or another and today it is it is definitely adding that that dark matter between the notes that goes from the ornamental to the rhetorical to the fervent, and then adding adding your beautiful instinct of, of creating a, a, a dynamic momentum and into that same fervor just makes it so compelling. And I think I think we can we can apply apply these to every passage that we come across. 
there is always there is always an answer with engaging with these particular tools of variation i guess is what we probably would call them so and and so here in the in the allegro we we really you know this this has really become such a masterful performance in your hands because we've talked uh, the the first time that you played it for me we were making decisions about our articulation you know, we talked about it in terms of because uh, you had made a wonderful, a, a wonderful fall of that figure, and also you accompanied it with with a with an a, a decided you know an actual connection, and so we we talked about how that was one way of doing it, and while still staying true to the contour and and the intent of the line, the nature of the line. The nature of the intervals it was possible right. to uh, keep the contour uh faithful but perhaps entertain different uh articulations such that when you get to the end of the piece or in other iterations of the fugue you know we, we can actually reserve the right to apply that that fervor and and as well it can really really sing out as well you know all all is possible there, there are some people who who maintain that the way we hear a fugue subject at the beginning should be determinative of how we hear it throughout the piece. And, and, and quite frankly, whenever we work on fugues, we work it uh, in terms of uh, reverse modular practice, so that not not just that we, so, that, so that we can learn the pieces in such a fantastic and concrete way but also that we can see in reverse it's like it's like the movie inception or something uh, mm -hmm. watching watching how, how time you know finally develops or you know Absolutely. only re remembering um very scantily you know things that had just you know, their memento that's what it was called oh, it's called memento exactly. and we we get a very hopscotch version of his memory and so so that we're actually discovering by virtue of of all of this material how it interacts with all of the counter subjects and therefore we can finally get back to the beginning and say yes that was a very good choice about you know what what the articulation we've arrived at um whereas once once we have arrived at that we also have also acknowledged the different ways in which the subject interacts with the counter subjects and the episodes so that we then acknowledge that yes there should be an evolution to the way we approach a fugue subject that we could make certain brand decisions and certainly decisions we make about uh, which uh, which elements of a fugue subject move forward and which elements move backward. I think that's also uh, variable, but I think we we can't go against the nature of of each element. I think they they either tend tend forward or tend backward. But yes, with with all of that in mind, um, you know, decisions and calibrations really sort of take care of themselves and and as, as you just really inhabit uh, this allegro so beautifully uh in in terms of its incorporation of of the theme and and your characterization of the subject is is really fantastic i i want to caution you to to uh, take our um our new idea of contour dynamics uh very seriously it's 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 quite something when when we find two voices actually reaching and, and rising, how amazing that that is when, when he makes a decision like that, how we now really uh, take take to that, you know, like, like, a, like a bird to the sky, and how we should really, uh, this is the, the one place where we really want to uh, be very, very disciplined in terms of the, the contrary motion. Maybe, how about somewhere around there? Do you see where I am? Like the contrary motion there. That's yes, contrary motion everywhere. Yes. Excellent. Well, isn't that something, right? Yeah, isn't that a, 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 another can of worms that we're opening, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because 
I, I was sort of looking at those spots where it's all 16th notes that are moving yes. contrary, but there's a lot more of that just like with 16th against eighth notes. And yes, stuff. exactly. I, I, I hadn't even really thought of it. I was, I was hunting and pecking for the, for the right example, but you're absolutely right. All of this is, is really, uh, is really beholden to, to, I think this very important idea of the, of the contour dynamics in, uh, in, response to contrary motion of any kind um so yeah that, that was beautiful I, I i did uh want to point out that we can vary this um if we can actually do them long or short no it's it's the octaves that i really think need the the variety Some some can be long, some can be short. Yeah. Have we have we fallen into the habit of, of doing the first one long, the second one third short, and the fourth one long? <laughs> there's there's this kind of reverse sort of electronic engineering where we've got plus minus and then minus plus, or or maybe we do them as echoes. I, you know, I don't know. Completely up to you, but I, I think I think this is a good place to to enlist an actual plan about about those octaves. So. I, that was the only thing I wanted to point out to that besides besides the contrary motion. Um, I just wanted to sp speak briefly about the rondo. Um, you have a beautiful sense of the rondo theme. Especially compelling is the idea of, of the falling seven. So, so, so that we don't ever have a feeling of, you know, it's, it's, we really always, always, always in your hands feel exactly this this differentiation that we need to have and yet it, it really comes from a palpable feeling of of really really making that that interval intoning that interval in in that way and i love all of the all of the ornaments that you're doing there's there's one place in the buzoni edition of the well-tempered clavier where i think i finally agree with him although i think he is the most the most most voluminously and passionately engaged uh, editor of the well-tempered clavier in history and and I, if you haven't experienced much of it you really you really should it's it's gorgeous gorgeous stuff so thoughtful he actually wrote etudes for uh for for each of the preludes so to to bring out certain uh, techniques and things like that just amazing but one of the ways that he uh, distinguishes sequences is by overholding which sort of uh, fits within his extraordinarily generous aesthetic and, you know, adding octaves to everything and everything is ringing in the pedal, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think, I think the most freeing element of, of the way we work with the music now, the way we look at the music now is the way that we, we are constantly creating transparency, opportunities for transparency. And so, and, and so with agogic engagement, as well as, um, durational uh, engagement, we are always looking for ways of, of making it more clear. And I think one of the times, uh, and it doesn't matter which one, which one you want to do, but I think one of the times we might want to take um, Buzzoni's advice and overhold it as a way of, of as one polarity of, of possibility of distinction. So, and so, so we can actually not do it dynamically. Don't do it. You know, it, it doesn't matter how soft you play it, but if you're overholding it like that, it's a it's a whole new ball game. And so I'm just I'm 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 saying that that might be fun to it. Probably not that way. Isn't, isn't that the is not the one that you actually add mordens to that one? Or I, I forget. Yeah. Um... Yeah. So maybe, so I think I think one of the later ones. Uh, let's let's try and find where I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I think I think probably for, uh, in bar seventy five. What would that be like? Well, and actually, actually, that means if if we're doing the bottom long, I think yeah, I think we lift definitely lift the top. Yeah. Top one still dynamically above. 
right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I, I think I think that's a good that's a good way to go. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It it it, it adds a certain lyric quality, I think, to it. Don't you think? It's oh, amazing. Yeah. And it changes the transparency. Um, yeah, the color there. In in a different way, and, and I I thought it was it, I thought it was odd when I when I saw one of Buzzoni's notations that in 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 seeking clarity between two sequential voices in the same register, the way he chose to solve that problem was actually by overholding rather than our agogic separation or our durational separation. So uh, I guess I guess it, it can work either way. So bully for Buzzoni, I think. <laughs> and and bully for you for this performance of, of, of this rondo, because you, you again have such an innate sense now of of the interplay among voices and the way in which we have to, I mean, cl clarity is not uh, what some people who play Bach think it is, where, where clarity is presenting all voices equally <laughs> And, and equally dispassionately, uh, I, I think we've passed that point. And I think you are so deeply engaged that we are deeply engaged with you and on your behalf. And I, I just, I, I applaud every opportunity I have to listen to you play, Ashley. Thank you, bravo. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Um, yeah, it's, and I need to say again, it's just been a huge privilege and honor to take part in, you know, these live sessions with you and being in the third challenge. Um, yeah, it's just been so much information, um, yes. but in, in the best way. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if this is the right time to say this, but I, I'm such a Radiohead fan as well. And I just, oh, really? so cool that you been doing those arrangements. I haven't had the chance to say it yet, but yeah. Oh my gosh, Ashley, I so appreciate that. And it's so funny that you mentioned it because uh, I'm, I'm just now in, in the midst of all this Bach, I'm, I'm now, I've got a concert here in LA and all radio headset. And yeah. uh, so that's why I, I, so I recorded Glass Eyes uh, because I've, I've been, <laughs> I've been applying our, our reverse modular practice to it. But it doesn't really it doesn't really work, it, it, you know, because it's just not it's not counterpoint. I think I think everything that's hard about the piece is hard about the first eight bars most times. Paranoid Android, I think, was was helped. And I, I will probably continue that discipline with Paranoid Android and maybe other things that get very, very exciting towards the end where I really should have some more concentrated and, and uh, modular discipline to the right. end part of the piece. So, so with that in mind, no surprises is something that I haven't played in, in quite a few years. But I think there are so many things that repeat in that, that I won't do modular practice. I'll just do, I'll do modular practice, but not in reverse. I'll do slow, slower and slowest. And then uh, things like all I need are def definitely are, are a huge, you know, uh, cathedral, cathedral anglouti sort of crescendo from, you know, from nothing to everything. And so that will definitely work with the modular practice. Paranoid Android will be very much helped by it. Um, but but yeah, I was practicing uh, Black Star yesterday and and fake plastic trees. The the most important thing though, the funniest thing, and you'll appreciate this actually, is that the Radiohead playing affected my Bach playing, or my Bach thinking, because when I made my first Radiohead record, I was listening to to tracks, choosing the right tracks for for you know for each song. There were some tracks that I was I was very concentrated. I, I remember Da Hong Situ was my producer, and I remember he was giving me notes. And there were tracks that I was too concerned about the beat. And it's a I mean it's a rock band. We want to luxuriate in the beat. But the fact of the matter is, we know where the beat is. You know, it's not we're going to mess with it. It's not it's we're not disguising it. But the best takes were those where I could feel myself concentrating on the on the melodic line. And that the texture was there to serve the singingness, the lyricism of that line. The percussiveness or the insistence on the beat was ephemeral in the best of takes. And so I think, I think that really contributed to you know, the way we were looking at Bach. You know, when, when we come to 
a passage that is that is difficult Bach is telling us complexity you know takes time. content determines uh, momentum and content determines everything but complexity demands you know that kind of engagement that kind of holding back and and putting a microscope on it for, for a moment even the syncopations that we take for granted in box music all of it really d demands that kind of freedom that kind of accommodation yeah. and in your performances i think the the way you're able to like put all that color from the songs onto like just the piano it, yeah that that engagement you have with all the different colors is like really cool to hear <laughs> like just well, on this yeah it's it's much better now ashley because we've been working together because now i'm much more conscious of it's not just the beat that i was over conscious of i, I was very conscious of and i've been conscious for a long time of, of having made really great mosaic momentary note choices every every 16th note that goes by is a really pretty sound, I gotta say. I mean, I, I worked a lot on that, but sometimes I, I think I celebrate that too much, and I really never did when I recorded them initially have a good sense of really the ambience of, of that fabric. I just thought it was a really cool fabric, you know, and I would pick the melody out, but aside from that, it, it, it's not really very differentiated. And so I'm happy to say, and, and so with that in mind, with the Bach in mind, that is all changing now for the better. And um, you, you'll go back and hear my old Radiohead record and say, oh, oh God, I, I, I wish he wouldn't play that that way. I was so terrible. He didn't know anything back then. My God, it's embarrassing. Put the YouTube thing on. <laughs> but, but, the, uh, but yes, the, the other thing that is the agogic engagement, because I, um, things that are, are very exciting, uh, even, even Glass Eyes, which is not a terribly... Uh, exciting piece, but it, it it comes to a grand ending. Do you like that one? Did you hear that one that's, recently? That's one of my favorites. Like when I when I first went on your YouTube channel, like two or three months ago, I saw that and I was like, <laughs> sorry, yeah. It's it's it. my it's my favorite of of the late ones, and uh, and that was really just two measures of the way he did it, and then everything else aside from melody and harmony is mine, you know, and that, yeah. that was so freeing, that experience of writing it. I, I, I so appreciate that you like that. But I, I now get to the end of Glass Eyes, and I, I'm pretty, pretty hepped up, you know, by the end of it, and it gets a very big texture. And yesterday, when I, when I made the, the live recording, I actually slowed down at the end. I was actually in control enough to say, yes, we can, we can you know, because I, I always had the feeling of, of getting softer at the end, but never really calming down. I, 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 felt, I felt solid at the end, but not really serene. And yesterday, you know, I, I had that kind of control. So I'm, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. But I, I, hope, I hope you won't be too embarrassed about my old Radiohead recordings anymore. Uh, I'll, I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll make new ones, I promise. <laughs> I'm so I'm so thrilled that you like them. I'm so thrilled that you like them. Oh, yeah, my favorite. They're my favorite. <laughs> well, Ashley, when will we see each other again? We'll see each other again very soon. I'm sure. Well, we'll I'll see you in one of the Facebook lives, but we'll, yeah. we'll see each other very very soon. Mm-hmm. On the Sunday one, I'll be yes. there. Yeah. Thank you, and have a have a wonderful weekend in the meantime. What are you doing this weekend? Um, this weekend. I've got a little bit of teaching and accompanying, um, also a little bit of relaxing because I just had um, a concert that I did. I played with some singers. I played some leader. Oh my God! Um, tell me what you tell me what you played. Oh, my German is awful. Um, there's we're just composers. Oh, there's Schubert. Uh, oh yeah, fantastic. it was mostly Schubert and one Hugo Wolf. Oh, fantastic! I love them. Yeah, it was so fun. I never. I haven't done that for years, like since my first year of year, it was very <laughs> enjoyable is all I would say. I'm so glad to hear. So yes, you just finished that concert and you, so you were saying you're relaxing. Yeah, a little bit. And then um, I have to make, I'm seeing Bernadette very soon. So oh, fantastic. So, yeah, I, I will be. Please give her my best. Soon. Please give her my best and tell her I, I'm, I'm anxious to have her do a Bach talk. Maybe she'll see some by then and she'll realize that 
I just everybody has a different tale to tell, and I'm so anxious to have a conversation with her because she's been such a, a good friend for so long, you know? That would be so cool. So yeah, talk, yeah. talk her into it, okay? Will do. Okay. <laughs> seeing her in about an hour. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, and, yeah. and tell her, tell her what a fantastic session you made it today. You really, everything you, you take to with such alacrity and, and with such instantaneous recognition and synthesis, it's just remarkable. I mean, I'm not even talking about your piano playing. Your piano playing is a beautiful manifestation of these of these completely brand new thoughts and the fact that you are so connected head hands and heart is is what makes the work with you so so exciting and what makes listening to you as a reformer so so exciting thank you thank you for the encouragement there yeah and i've just i've been thinking that the reason why i think it's these new ideas are like still approachable is that they've been broken down into such like the most elemental and basic um i guess forms of those ideas and yeah it's i feel like i'm being taken through it step by step as well so that's that's been really, really step by helpful. step uh, i mean uh, somebody said recently oh no it was georgie shebach said uh, that bach is a free country which I think is a lovely sentiment, but I, my immediate comeback to this fellow who quoted me this thing, I said, yeah, but I've got the maps. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that you do. <laughs> yeah. And now you do. And yeah. the, the, other, the other fun thing about it is, is that we've got the maps and you know what? My maps have different solutions than yours and they're both valid. They're both valid and they both have great sense of responsibility moment to moment. Every, every interaction and reaction, a, a real true coding level appreciation of, of Bach's genius. And it, it, it ceases, I think, I don't know how you feel about this, Ashley, but I, I feel it ceases to be interpretation. I think we're just following directions, right? I think, yeah, that's how we. I'm learning to look at the music now, um, gradually, gesture, gestures at a time, and making decisions based on those. Yeah. Thank you as well, Ashley, for your eloquence. It's it's always it's always inspiring. I, I truly appreciate. It. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see each other soon. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. Good night. Bye-bye. Have a great one. Thanks. You Bye, too. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom.